Hey, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, your acrylic guru. Now today I was wondering what to paint and this might be a bit of a longer than normal video. Not too long, but might go a bit longer than my normal ones, okay? Um, I've been wondering what to paint, so I thought I'll, I'll find some pictures here or there and incorporate them all into the one subject. And I want to do some sort of a water scene, but then I saw a, a lady on the beach just standing there looking out. So I thought that, that, that makes a... So I want to do something like that, like a lady or a girl just standing at the beach looking at the horizon line, maybe some beautiful clouds in the sky, a bit of a rolling wave, just all that aspects going, you know. And it's something that can look nice as a small or a large painting. All right, you might have noticed I've cut me hair. I went out to the garage yesterday and I cut me hair yesterday because it was getting a bit long and wobbly and all over the bloody place. But now I feel like a new man. So I've got my canvas here. There's the sizes written up on there right now in um, centimetres. And I've got a bit of tape here which I've sort of marked for my horizon line. I don't know, I'm just looking at my monitor there to see what you can see. That's why you might notice me looking down there a lot. But um, yeah, so we'll get going. I better move my glasses so they don't get wet. I use phthalo blue, phthalo turquoise, titanium white, yellow oxide, and raw sienna. And also in the mix, I had some clear medium retarder. <laughs> My canvas is pretty much dry, so I've got my spray bottle. I'm only going to do the top half first, and then we'll come back down to the bottom half. I've got my white flowing paint with retarder mixed in it, just so as I can get some sky blending on my canvas, okay? Now back up here, there's my sky, so I'll get all this cross-action, wiping this paint all onto this canvas here. I'm using a two inch brush just to apply the paint. I'm just going to do the top half first like I said so I don't have to try and race against time to get things dry. Now this surface here that's a flowable paint it's not a thick structured paint it's a flowing moving paint it's got movement in it it's thinner than normal paint and you don't want this too too thick and someone was asking me what brush do I use for blending well, I go to the depot store, the Bunnings store, the big home improvement stores, and they have a paint section where you buy paints for your houses. They've got rollers, they've got brushes, they've got masking tape, they've got all sorts. And they have a big variety of brushes. I just go there to buy my two-inch brushes that I use for blending. And somebody asked me, I forget their name now, I should have wrote their name down, sorry about that. But it's a subscriber saying, do I use a soft or a hard brush for blending? It's not really soft and it's not really hard. To me, a brush like this is pretty hard. The bristles are like more like synthetic plastic and hard. And if you're using something like that to blend, it can scratch into your paint. And if you have a brush that's too soft, you'd be like tripping over it all the time. So it's kind of a cutting in brush, they call it in Australia. All right. Now we'll get some phalo blue on there. Okay, down here I've got phalo blue with some clear medium retarder. Now I'm going to use my brush that I applied the white on with and I'm going to mix this with that retarder, okay? Now what this is doing, for those of you who are not familiar with my work, this keeps this stuff very wet and blendable until I want to blow dry it with a blow dryer, all right? And some people ask, how much do you put in? I just put in whatever I think it needs, depending on your climate. And if you put too much in, you just wait for it to dry or you can get a hair dryer to dry it. All right, now I want a sky, I want a nice blue sky. I want to sort of, I'm just going to sort of pretend I'm already blending with this because I want to leave some open bits for some clouds. I don't really need a really dark sky. I wanted a beautiful beachy sky and probably clear down the bottom. So we're just sort of getting that scratched into the canvas here. It's nice and wet. 
just like so. See, that was very easy. I didn't even use much there. Now I'll get my blending brush. First time I'm using it on this painting today. It's dry. All right. Now twist, twist, and leave some white areas as well because they create soft white bits in the sky. The sky isn't always perfectly blue on every day. Some days it is, but we're not that lucky to be graced with a blue sky every day. Now wipe your brush when you blend my way, the way I do my blending. It's picking up paint every time you blend. So be sure to wipe it. And as you blend, don't just sit in one area and move like that. I'm twisting the brush as I go all different ways because the way the hair hits the canvas, it sort of creates different whirls in the paint, different visual movements in the paint. And I want to bring the bottom of this sky down to the atmosphere reasonably light, okay? So we're coming down, wipe the brush. Because this is going to have some lovely, soft, fluffy clouds. It's a nice, beautiful day. Okay, so look at that. That was very easy. We've gone from dark to lights and we've come down. Now see here, you can make that even lighter if you like by adding white under the bottom of the blue. So this is the white I first primed the canvas up with. That's if you want to do this. I'll just do a bit over here to show you. And I don't want to brush it on because it's going to ruin all this. I like the way that's looking. So I'm just going to stamp on some white like this, like so. I'll just do this side here so you get an idea what I'm talking about. Grab my blending brush and blend the body of this paint. I'm blending that first, okay? So my paint has already started to pick up the white paint on there. See that? Now I wipe it. I've virtually conditioned my brush to blend that up into the blue sky now. And look how easy it is. I'm dancing this brush on and off the board and also twisting it okay on and off the board is important if you're just there twisting it you're gonna get a swirly bloody mess so it's important you're sort of teasing it and moving it okay now we'll bring that up into the blue and that's created a lighter atmosphere down the bottom of the sky I've just done this side of it so you get an idea what I was talking about Okay, so see this is it's pretty much the way it is already over here. All right, we'll do some fun, beautiful, simple and easy clouds. So that's just the type of sky I've been looking for in this painting. Now it's not that hard, just press the pause button and catch up. All right, sometimes you might have to play the whole video to get a grasp of what's going to happen and how and why. Then you can go back to the beginning set yourself up and start having some art fun with me, all right? Okay, for my simple, easy clouds, I've got my beautiful, structured, good quality white paint. Not the stuff I primed the canvas up with, but proper titanium white onto my fan brush, okay? And we're going to apply the paint to the clouds now normally I'm, I'm finding my patterns of clouds are all looking very similar and it annoys me so it doesn't annoy me too much but i want to put a different cloud so we're going to start up here and do something like that now with a cloud you've got to create your edge so i'm going to create my edge i hope this is going to work so i'm virtually doing a long standy uppy sort of cloud and he's going to disappear down into the atmosphere like that see how that was now I'm going to put that down and pick up my blending brush and I'm going to blend pretty much the middle and tickle the edges a little bit just to get rid of some of that give it that nice puff whipped cream look about it it'll pick up some of the blues for, sh for shadows I hope I've got to wipe that brush Yeah, 
that's it. Just tickle some of the edges. Because it's acrylic, I don't sweep it across like some oil artists do. I don't need to. You can get away with just tickling the edges the way they are. Now we've done that. That's the first layer of a simple cloud and she's sitting in the atmosphere okay. But that's the sort of cloud I wanted. I want to get some darker value in the middle so I can put something in front of it. Okay. There's one cloud. Now that brush will load up again. We don't want an overly heavily clouded sky, so I'll just put sort of one here. Oh, 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 just dance it across like that. Look at that. And he's going to come down. Grab your blending brush. Now, from halfway down, I'm blending into nothing. Okay? Just to give you the illusion of it looking like a decent, okay looking cloud. And because we've got such a light blue sky, it's not picking up much shadow in there. Wipe your brush. Blend down. Let it, let it rain down with a soft cloud. Okay. And like I said, just sometimes you, you've done your blending here, you sort of come up and accidentally tickle the tops a bit. Not all the whole top, just bits of it. So it looks soft and lovely and like I said, whipped cream. And now with this one, because it looks a bit bland, we've got to come back to that and put something in front of it, just so as it's pure white paint. That's it. That's all I want. And we're going to blend this down as well. You sort of sit it down onto the painting. It's like it's you've put it on there, you've, you've stood the cloud up, and now it's going to sit down on the stool and be comfortable in your painting. Okay? There we go. That was too easy. Now the next procedure is I want to mask up for the horizon line and then we can start attacking the bottom with the watercolours. And I would like a bit of medium retarder in there so I can get them blending nice and smooth because for some beginners, if you're using just water, you can get a, and you're using a smaller brush like for instance this you can learn on little canvases but if you if you're doing something this size and you're done your practicing with all your procedures it can be a bit a lot of hard work or a lot of work so that's why I'm using the size of the brush I do now so I can just whack it on there no messing around at all and it's just getting it done in a quicker more bigger stroke the bigger the better the brush stroke across that canvas is better than lots of little little ones like that. Just that's in my eye, but if you're happy the way your stuff looks and the way you're comfortable in doing that, that's what you want to keep with as well. I can only suggest certain things here. Now we're going to dry this. All right, let's mask her up so as we can get a beautiful straight horizon line, which I want mine about there. Just so we don't get a mess up there. Down here for the bottom half of the painting under the mask and tape, I've got that flow white paint with a bit of retarder in there. Now we'll wet this bottom half of the canvas just so the paint's going to flow across those potholes a lot easier. And we'll just get this white paint on there. Gee, I think the paintbrush eats more of that up than what the canvas does. So we've just got some retarder in there and some white
I have three piles of thalo turquoise and I'm going to add white in these other two to tone it down. But this is the first one I want to use for the top of the watermark on the horizon line. It's just straight out of the tube. So we're going to start at the top of the canvas here. And look at that, that's nice and dark. I'm using the brush sideways, not this way. Just so I can get the pressure of it on. And this is why I use a big brush. Now I'm going to come down into that white, just like so. Now I'll just get that nice across, and that's it, done. Hang on, let's brush it. Now I can see it's getting thick and sort of grabby. I don't know if you noticed just there. So a bit of water will stop that as well. It allows you to, look at that, beautiful. We'll grab some white and we'll start mixing because I want a medium tone and a lighter tone, okay? So we'll keep putting some of the soft flow paint in there. And you can virtually see it next to that one, the difference it is. All right, now the wave I want about here. So let's get this in. Don't go all the way because we've got to put some sand colour there. So we're virtually going to come to there. Now we'll get a bit more white into that. Because we want a distinct wave somewhere about. We've got to get the wave to a right height so as we've got room for the, the bottom of the painting. Alright, so I'm just getting that along there in a reasonable line. Okay. Now I'm just going to wipe this brush. It's still got that paint in there a bit. And I'm just picking up white now. And I want to grab a lighter tone here. So we've virtually got three. Get some more white on there. Don't be shy with your white. We've virtually got three bands. We've got dark, medium and light. And this is going to make pretty much a decent decent wave. That light into the medium can be blended a lot softer. That'll do. Now I want to get some dark back into here. Now I've got a soft brush. It's like a small filbert brush but it's very soft. The hairs on this are very soft. I'll wet that paint down a bit. Now we've got the dark, medium and the light tone but be between the light and the medium, where our wave is, we want to put a bit more dark there, just like so. And I'm using this brush because it's a bit smaller than my big two inch brush. Can't go using my two inch job all the time. And we just want to blend that in there like that. Get a bit more on there. That's it. Now this wave is going to be pretty much head on to looking at as okay. So I'm going to map out roughly where I want the wave. So we're virtually coming across here. I'm just using my little small fan brush and I'll sort of come down here and I might bring it back up here like that. It could have another bit coming down there, okay? And it's just rolling ready to break so that's our wave I want to keep some dark in there now I'm just going to sort of dance this across but I want to get another brush to actually start detailing this because it'll probably have some water there as well all right now I'm grabbing my smaller round brush and I want to start dabbing it on. If you find that your paint is too wet, which I'm finding right now, I'm going to start blow drying this and I'll come back to it. All right, let's go again. So we'll start bringing some, all this turbulent water. I'm just sort of dotting this over here and there. 
don't even think about what you're going to do with your brush stroke just oh you bit thick thing there just sort of dance it on it's going into nothing there bits are slowly ready to fall over and break now I'm breaking it up now I'm stabbing it enough so it's it's sort of blending it tightly see what it's doing here it's blending and then I can crisp this up with some sharper white colors I don't want that too white there. Just like that. The same here. Whoop. If you make mistakes, don't worry about it. Just keep just keep doing your painting. See, this is all the white, but I've sort of blended it with the turquoise there. And I can come back and sharpen that white up. I just want to fix that bit of a boo-boo there. It shouldn't really be that white there. So I'll do that. Wipe that brush and get some of the darker phthalo green, or phthalo turquoise, sorry, and put back where that was supposed to be. Yeah, see, you make a mistake, you just fix it up like that. I could have fixed that mistake up off camera and not showed you, but at least you know how it's done. So we're going to grab the medium and come into the light and bring some of the lights into the medium. So we're going to cross over and do a bit of swapping of colours here and there. So we'll just sort of, just like that. It's like you're blending but with stupid long ugly brush strokes. That's pretty much done there. Now we'll get the lighter tone that we have on our palette and we'll start bringing that into the... So from this one they're sort of coming into the darker ones. Just not too much. Very lightly. Now I just want to get my brush, I don't like them there, they're a bit thick, I'm going to sort of blend them in a bit further, that's it, that's it, like that, didn't want them too stampy and blodgy like cartoon nonsense you know. There we go, we're getting all the tones in there. Now where the medium is meeting the light, we've got a straight line, but you don't want it just too straight. So we're going to start blending in a way, but with horizontal brush strokes like this, just to break it up. Okay. Just to break up that straight line. Now before I get too carried away, I better put the sand part on so we can have the water over the sand, alright? Every time I do sand, I just opt for yellow oxide, it's quite easy for me. You can mix any colour you like. And we've got to get this bottom all put in there, so bring it up to the blue. I'll spray that so you watch it, see how that's dancing across the canvas a lot easier once I sprayed it when it's dry it's pretty hard so we'll see in that straight line you don't want it too straight as well you can you can kind of bring that into the water there to break some of that up you can get some white and dance through it just to change the tone of it so I'm just grabbing some white 
onto me brush and I'll just get some white in there like that. That's all right. I'll wash it, dry it. <coughs> then I want to lightly stroke it. That's, that's good enough. Just so it's not one flat boring colour. I want the eye of the wave, I want a bit of brightness in there. So usually on here we'll, we'll bleed a bit of brightness with the lighter tone we got there. Just about there, wipe your brush and blend that back into that colour there just so it's transitioning from the two tones. And then the same on the other side. It's just putting that light coming through the, the back of the wave. Just like that. Wipe your brush. Get it on there a bit. And then rub it back along the length of the wave. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to fix all this up. So I'm going to wet the brush. See how that looks a bit... Um, dry and brushed. I'm just wetting the brush a bit, wiping it, and I want to interact that with the other colour under there, just to sort of make it more smoother of a transition. I don't like the way it's broken up. So I'm going to do this. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm happy, I'm happy. So you get happy when things go great for you. Now we've got to dance some water in front of that, so to speak. Bring that across the front here. Just like that. If you don't put the water in it, it'll be hard to blend and it'll feel like chalk. Okay. Quickly get this bit here done. Have it sort of up and downish like that, so up and down. All right, now I'm grabbing my filbert and I'm going to work out where I want the white wash to come across. So I'm just going to let's see if this needs to be dry. I'm just sort of getting that on there in a roundabout way. Wipe your brush, load it up again. I want if anything, the front nice and sharp because this is the wash up onto the sand. And just start pulling that back like so. And then we'll detail this as well. Now I've dried all this and I'm getting a longer detailed brush and I'm coming across and I want to keep it parallel with the painting. I don't want to go too out of perspective with it, okay? This is just bringing that whitewash. And like I've done before in videos, sort of pull it up and back. Keeping this edge here nice and sharp. And this edge going into the water is what we want to break up. So I'm using a small, it's like a thick stubborn brush that I use for blending and this I find pulls the paint back the brushes are the brush hairs on it are nice and stubborn which allows you to do a lot of great blending and tossing around with the colors so we're sort of blending this back into the wave there and we're going to dance some foam and soap onto the top as well to sink the sand down underwater and just sort of Dance some soap onto the top of the water. All right, so we've got everything sunken down. Okay, grabbing some of the blue and turquoise I've mixed with the yellow oxide so as I can get it on the script liner. And I want to, oh, I want to go really thin across here. Very nice and thin just to create the shadow under this wash up area here. Now try and work out, you don't want to do it all in one full line. 
you want to sort of keep it so look back at your painting and work out where you've put it and where you haven't put it and take it from there now I'm grabbing my small blending brush again it's just a little flathead but it's really flared out at the end it's had a lot of use and it's work you can use a knife for this but I'm getting the finer detail of the the spray from each wave now and I'm just sort of dancing on there working out where you want it twisting it into the air very lightly step back and look at your work as you're doing it you don't want to overdo it and we're coming along here it's just sort of keeping the dark in there as well come over it's coming down sort of spraying you could pull it up a bit like that so it looks like the winds just pulling the top of it off see here just the not all of it just this very edge is all you want show you along there just that very edge and this paint is very tacky and almost dry see just that edge of the wave don't kill it all there we go we've got the detail of the wave done okay she's resembling a wave now we'll get the masking tape off before it bloody makes a home on there and if you want I might put a few get the knife with some white and we'll put some white sun shining onto the water <laughs> I've gone and drawn the outline of the lady standing on the beach with her hat and the colours I've mixed up I've got titanium white and I've lightened it down with some phthalo blue I'm also using oxide yellow and toned it down with white and I've got raw sienna and I've toned that down with white as well now with the lady's image I'm working out what to do first second and third so I'm going over in the right order with the layers of paint so I want to do the skin first the dress the hair then the hat over the hair I'm using the yellow oxide toned down with white for her skin color so I'm going to use this color on her legs just get this up there like that and then I'll shadow the areas of her skin color with with a plain yellow oxide with no white in it. Same colour for her arms up here, just the yellow oxide tinted with white. Just in there, then I can paint the dress over this skin colour once it's done. Now this is the yellow oxide not tinted down with white, I'm just using this for the shadow of her legs. So we're getting that bit of dimension in her cartoon character. She's a cartoon character but not full on. It's got a bit of detail in it. We'll do a little bit in the arms as well. Just for the elbows and the shadow of the sleeve on the dress. Alright. Now this dress is going to be toned with shadow as well so it won't be stark white all right we've got the white dress on there and I'll just clean that brush and I'm going to pick up the white that I lightened up with the blue and we're gonna just put some shades and shadows into her dress Just something down there. Yeah. Shadow all across the back. Down here. And probably here. Just like that.
doesn't have to be too detailed but detailed enough just to show that it's a decent looking image out there standing on the foreshore of this beach put a bit up here as well now we'll, we've got to use these same colors for the hat but I want to do the hat after the hair just so as I can block in the hair under that hat now this is the raw sienna that's been highlighted for the hair just to get some indication of some hair coming under the hat there it's a brown headed girl this one now I'm just grabbing the raw sienna without the white in it and I just want to put some shadow under a hat or a hair just down there like that wipe your brush and we'll block in the hat nice white beach hat sun hat something you wear at the beach I saw this picture, it was in another picture, some sort of clouded picture and I thought that's not a bad addition to incorporate into a, a painting. So I will create a traceable for this girl if you want to incorporate that into your rendition of this painting. grabbing that blue again that we shaded the dress with which has been toned down with white and we're going to just give this hat some shading as well just like so put a bit at the top there as well just leaving a bit of white for that band Well, there's our girl on the beach I'll just sign this now I hate signing paintings though oh, they work out so horrible who likes signing their paintings and we'll do Steve's little paw print as well can't leave Steve out Shrek. Right, we'll put a frame on her and see how that looks. Yeah, that's not too shabby after all, eh? Okay, there's the end of our painting there, the girl standing on the beach, okay? Hope you like this exercise. Please subscribe to my channel and the blooper channel as well. And tell a friend if you like everything I do, but if you don't, tell everybody, okay? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.